Hi friends, welcome back to Apple Bay Academy's classes. So in today's session, we are going to discuss about a very important capital budgeting technique, which is payback period. We are actually discussing this particular topic under the module business finance. So today we will be discussing one of the capital budgeting technique that is payback period. So we will discuss about this payback period in detail. So, so before getting to know about payback period or capital budgeting technique, you should know what is a capital budgeting. So what do you mean by the process of capital budgeting? As you can see that there are two terms specified in it like capital and budgeting. So it is saying about taking a future oriented decision. That means we are taking some decisions which is very important for the company like it's a part of capital expenditure. Capital expenditure means the expenditure which you are uh, which is for a uh, number of period okay and huge amount is also involved in it. As you can see that that's a topic which we are normally discussing in your accounting area that is capital expenditure and revenue expenditure. So capital expenditure means the expenditure which you got incurred for a future period and you will get the benefit in a future periods. You will you are able to get the benefits only uh, by the coming future periods only. So as you can see that when you are purchasing a particular asset or when you are replacing an asset or when you are choosing a particular project, all these results into a huge expenditure. So let's see, spending of funds for large expenditures like purchasing fixed asset and equipment, replacement of fixed asset or equipment, research and development, expansion and like. So if you are spending such amount for all these purposes, you can actually refer them as it's a part of a capital budget. Okay, like you are making an estimate regards to that. And what is this capital budgeting decision? It is just like you're taking a decision whether to accept a particular project or uh, not to accept a particular project. Like here you can see that whether you, you need to go for project A or project B. That's a decision. Okay, that, that you are just taking decisions based on many criteria. That's why we have some capital budgeting techniques. So based on uh, these capital budgeting techniques, you are able to take a better decision like whether you go for project A or project B. So if you're taking a decision whether to accept project A or project B, that is called capital budgeting decision. And the tools which you are using for taking such decisions is known as capital budgeting technique. Okay. So let's see, this process involves the decision regarding the source of finance, like from which a source you need to raise your fund and also including the calculation of the return that can be earned from the investment. So uh, the return or how much return you are able to uh, derive from a particular investment that can also be calculated during, uh, with the help of this capital budgeting technique. And you can see that this capital budgeting is irreversible in nature because as you can see that uh, the capital expenditure means you are making a huge amount of investment. So which is much more difficult to reverse such a process as, as, as that will also result in a huge expenditure for the concern. So uh, generally we will call capital budgeting decisions are irreversible in nature. You can, if you are going to reverse such uh, an expenditure, what is the result you are uh, or you may be facing a huge amount of losses. Okay. So now we are coming to our major topic as you can see that capital budgeting techniques can be mainly classified into two as traditional techniques and modern techniques. Traditional techniques inclu include two types of techniques which is payback period and accounting rate of return or average rate of return. And when coming to modern techniques, it include net present value, IRR that is internal rates of return, profitability index, net terminal value, discounted payback. So these are the major types of or major capital budgeting techniques. So you have two classification which is traditional and modern. So by seeing this table you are able to identify which all which all are the traditional techniques and which all are the modern techniques. So you should be able to differentiate them. And what about this traditional technique? So traditional technique is also known as it's a conventional technique or it's a non-discounting technique. It is the it, it is a method, it's a traditional method that you are following. So when it comes to this particular term, non-discounting technique, which means it is not or this particular technique is not at all considering time value of money. We know the time value of money is a very important concept which we are studying in business finance. It is saying about the value of the currency that or the value of the rupee today and when you are making it a comparison with tomorrow, you can see that the value of money that you are receiving today is much more valuable than the, the, the same amount that you are going to receive on some future period. Okay, that is the term time value of money. So such a concept is not actually included in case of this traditional technique. That's why it is known as known discounting technique. Okay.
payback period. So in this capital budgeting technique, we know that payback period is a traditional technique. So we are not considering anything about uh, the time value or risk factors is not at all considered in this particular technique. And what does it calculate or what is the criteria which we are using in case of payback period to take a decision? Okay, let's see here the entity calculates the time period required to earn the initial investment of the project or investment. So here we are calculating the time which is required, the time period which is required to get back the investment which you made earlier. Like if I just invested rupees 5 lakh in this business, so as per payback period, I'm just calculating the time period which required or the, the time period which is needed to get back the initial investment that means to get back a rupees 5 lakh from this investment okay so the project or investment with the shortest duration is opted for so if you are using this payback period and you have two situation i will just say that if i am going for project a and uh, the payback period will be three years and if i am going for project b the three back uh, the payback period will be four years so in project A, you will, you will have three years payback period and for project B, it is four years. That means that in case of project A, you need only three years to get back your initial investment. Okay, only three years is required to get back your investment. But if you're going for project B, it needs four years. So you need one more additional years uh, to get back your initial investment in case of project B. So according to payback period, we will choose the one uh, where the payback period is short okay so we will go for which project we will go for project a because it needs only three years to get back the initial amount so this is a you can see that it's a very common method and it's a very simple method which you can use to take such a capital budgeting decision okay and we are also calling this payback period as payout method or payoff method all these are very uh, or the different names which we usually call for this payback period and this is a crude method for evaluation like for a project evaluation it's a base method which you are normally using and when it comes to its calculation so in order to get or in order to calculate this payback period we need some equation so what about the equation total investment divided by annual cash inflow so in order to find the payback period of a particular project you need to take the total investment the initial investment that you are making in that particular project divided by annual cash inflow that means the benefit you are getting from the business is returned every year you need to take its total amount annual like you need to uh, take for its a uh, a particular year so when you are just going this is a basic equation that we are normally using like it's a total investment divided by annual cash inflow but you can see that you can use uh, this particular equation only in case when the annual cash inflows for the several periods are same like uh, in, in our example i already mentioned that if you're going for project a and you got uh, an investment of rupees 5 lakh and you are getting annually uh, rupees 50,000 from this project okay that means for every year you are getting 50,000 so if the annual cash inflow is similar or if it is same you can go for this particular equation that is total investment divided by annual cash inflow okay and you when you are taking this cash inflow you should always take cash inflow before depreciation and after tax tax should be deducted but you should you should add back your depreciation so that point is very important in case of payback period cash flow should be uh, or the cash flow must be before depreciation and after tax. So I will just show you uh, a practice question to get a more understanding related to this particular uh, payback period. So the Delta company is planning to purchase a machine known as Machine X. Machine X would cost rupees 25,000 and would have a useful life of 10 years with zero salvage value. The expected annual cash inflow of the machine is 10,000. So here you need only two information. One is about the initial investment. So for purchasing this particular machine, your initial investment was rupees 25,000. And you can see that the expected annual cash flow. So that means for every year, for every year, you are getting an amount of rupees 10,000. So 10,000, you will get 10,000 annually. So for every year, uh, this amount will be same, 10,000 itself. So as per the equation which we already discussed here, you can see that total investment divided by annual cash inflow. And here the total investment is rupees 25,000 and divided by annual cash inflow is 
10,000. So 25,000 divided by 10,000, which is so easy that that means it takes 2.5 years to get back your initial investment. So this is a very simple way to do problem from this payback period. But as I already mentioned that you can use this equation only when the cash inflows for different periods are same. And if the cash inflows are uneven, like for the first year you are receiving a 20,000 uh, rupees as a return, for next year you are getting 25,000, another year you are going to receive 10,000, like a way the cash inflows for different periods are uneven, to calculate payback period you can actually use this particular equation which is years before full recovery plus unrecovered cost divided by cash flow during next year, years before full recovery plus unrecovered cost divided by cash flow during next year. So we will discuss a problem related to this in another video. So firstly you just go through the payback period, the simplest equation which we already discussed in case of cash inflows are similar or the even cash inflows in the, such a situation, the equation which you can be used, okay. So in this video we discussed about payback period and its calculation. So it's a very important and very simple capital budgeting technique. As you can see that for every exam, for every exam they are actually asking question from this capital budgeting technique. Either it can be for shift 1, shift 2 or shift 3. Even though they are asking question uh, every time from this particular topic. So either can be it's a process or they can actually ask for about any of the specific uh, technique or they can actually use uh, you, ask you to calculate problem from this area. So I hope this video will help you for your preparation. Thank you and happy learning.